If you're running an e-commerce business and have no clue which metrics to track, this video is for you. When I started my online store, I would track sales for one month and the next month I would track Instagram followers and my business went nowhere. And once I started tracking these seven essential metrics, my business took off. I'll show you how you can make practical decisions that would grow your business. Whether you are using WooCommerce, Shopify or any other e-commerce platform, you should be able to find these metrics without doing any calculations. Let's go. Sales. Every business should track its sales each month. This should tell you whether you are reaching your monthly sales goals. Here's how you can use this metric practically. Sales goals. You can't come up with a random number and make it your monthly sales goal. You need to look at your historical sales data and figure out a monthly sales goal. Plan your cash flow. Your monthly sales will help you to plan your cash flow. You can decide how much cash will be available each month based on your sales. That will help you when making purchasing decisions as well as other expenses. Motivator. Sales is the ultimate motivator. The higher the number, the better you feel. So use this as a motivator for you and your employees. Orders. Next, you need to track the number of orders you get. It can be daily or monthly. How can you use this metric practically? Predicting future sales. If you get 100 orders and make $10,000, you can predict your sales if you get 150 orders. Use the monthly number of orders to plan your sales goals for the future. What will your monthly sales will be if you get X number of orders? Packing and shipping planning. If you get 100 orders daily, you can calculate how many hours it takes to pack and ship 100 orders. This will help you to plan your packing material needs and the number of employees you need in your warehouse. Products sold. How many products do you sell during a month? This metric is very helpful in multiple ways. Purchasing and merchandising. If you know how many products or units you sell per month, you can use this number to plan your future purchases. To increase your sales, you must proportionately increase the number of products in your warehouse. Warehouse planning. This metric can also help you to plan your warehouse capacity. If you want to double your business, you must also increase your warehouse capacity. The number of monthly products you sell will help you plan the capacity. Average order value. What's the average amount a customer spends? This is one of the most important metrics you should track in your business. This will help you when it comes to increasing sales. There are several ways to increase your sales and one of them is increasing the average order value. Can you get your customers to spend more? If they buy one product, can you get them to buy more? Pricing. You can use the average order value to make pricing related decisions. You can experiment with discounts and bundles to increase your average order value. Free shipping. You can decide the threshold based on your average order value. If your average order value is $50 and you want to increase that to $75, you can increase the free shipping threshold to $75. Conversion rate. The conversion rate is the critical metric that tracks the percentage of website visitors who ends up purchasing. If you get 10,000 website visitors and 200 purchases, your conversion rate is 2%. Once you know this metric, you can figure out ways to increase your sales. Increasing website traffic. If you increase website traffic with the same conversion rate, you'll get more purchases. That's one way to experiment with your conversion rate. You can allocate more money to paid ads or improve your SEO to increase website traffic. Increasing the conversion rate. On the other hand, if you can improve your conversion rate from 2 to 3% with the same web traffic, you will increase the number of purchases. To increase the conversion rate, you can optimize your website. Find out at which stage the users fall off. Streamline your checkout process. That's how you can use the conversion rate to drive more sales in your business. New customers versus returning customers. The split between new customers and returning customers is another metric you should closely monitor. New customers. First, let's look at new customers. How many new customers do you get per month? You need to make sure that new customers are discovering your business. If your returning customers are higher than new ones, you are not converting enough new customers. On the other hand, if your returning customers are declining, they don't continue to purchase. Attracting new customers is more expensive than retaining them. You must figure out how to get them to buy from you continuously. 
This ratio affects you differently based on your industry. For example, if you are selling a product like a mattress, your customers may not return for at least another couple of years because the lifetime of a mattress is measured in years. Then you need to focus your efforts on attracting new customers. However, you need returning customers if you are selling a perishable product like a food or a drink. If they don't buy continuously, there's something wrong with the business model. Sell through rate. Sell through rate shows how efficiently you are moving your inventory. This is only applicable if you are selling a physical product. If you had 1000 products at the beginning of the month and sold 600 products, your sell through rate is 60%. This metric is critical to find out slow moving products. How do you think businesses decide to discount or discontinue their products? They look at the sell through rate. You can use this metric to do seasonal sales and eliminate products that are not moving well. Purchasing and inventory planning. Sell through rate will also help you when sourcing or manufacturing your products. You don't want to source something that's not moving fast. Right, those are the seven metrics that every e-commerce business owner should track. At the end of each month, I track these metrics and a few more on a simple Google sheet. Trust me, once you start doing this, you'll understand your business like no other and your decision making will improve drastically. That's it for this video. Since starting my online business, I have made so many mistakes and in the next video, I share the 13 biggest mistakes I made that would have ruined my business. Check out that video next. See you on the other side.